Thank you, uh, Dennis. Uh, this is Kunal Shah from ICSI Securities. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today we have with us uh, Mr. Sanjay Malhotra, uh, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. S.K. Gupta, uh, Director Technical, Mr. Uh, Najoy Chaudhary, uh, Director Finance, and other uh, senior officials of uh, REC Limited uh, to discuss their uh, Q4 FY21 and full year FY21 earnings and to uh, give us the update on the power sector developments as well as the uh, financing uh, uh, opportunities and outlook. So uh, over to you, sir. Okay, thank you and uh, good afternoon to everyone. It's indeed a pleasure to be uh, with all of you once again and to share with you our thoughts and especially the results of uh, the last financial year. Uh, as you would all have gone through, the last uh, year has been, uh, insofar as REC is concerned, a stupendous year. It has been the best year uh, insofar as uh, uh, the profits uh, uh, and the revenues, etc., are concerned. Let me first of all take you through uh, the major highlights of uh, uh, the last financial year. Uh, you would all perhaps be aware that the sanctions last year, we had record sanctions of more than 1.5 uh, lakh crore, which is a 40% rise over the corresponding uh, period last year, the full year. Similarly, disbursements at almost 93,000 crore uh, are up 23%. Interest income is up uh, 17% at almost 35,000 crore, 34,684 crore to be uh, precise. And uh, total expenditure on the other hand uh, has increased only by 8%, finance cost only by 13%, uh, as a result of which the profit before tax is uh, the highest ever. Uh, for REC at about uh, 10,750 crore, up 54% last year, and PAT is also a record uh, for REC at 8,362 crore, which is 71% more. Our loan book, therefore, has grown by 17% and is now about 3.77 lakh uh, crore. In terms of the key indicators, uh, very happy to report that net worth has increased uh, by 24% and now stands at 43,426 crore vis-a-vis -vis 35,000 crore. Last year, uh, the CR AR uh, ratio, now uh, we are quite comfortable touching 20%, 19.72% 72 to be precise vis-a-vis 16.06% uh, last year. De debt equity has also improved. It is now 7.4 as against uh, 7.94 last year. The spread has increased. Uh, the yield on uh, uh, our uh, loan portfolio has uh, marginally decreased by 11 basis points primarily because of liquidity infusion scheme in which we have given concessional uh, rate of interest considering the pandemic uh, 11 basis point it has come down but it has been helped by reduction in cost of funds by 18 basis points from 7.31 it has gone down to 7.13 percent per annum in the last financial year as a result of which the spread more or less static, but slight improvement from 3.26 to 3.33 percent. Similarly, NIM, there is a 15 basis point improvement from 3.74 to 3.89. The return on net worth is more than 21 percent, and interest coverage ratio is also quite comfortable at 1.5. In terms of uh, asset quality over the previous year, we have Again, uh, there is an improvement with uh, more provisioning and resolution of few assets. Uh, the gross NPN now stands at 4.84% as against 6.59% as on 31st March 2020. 
and the provisional uh, the, the coverage ratio provisions coverage ratio is two thirds almost two thirds 64.59 percent and the net NPA is now 1.71 percent as against 3.32 percent. Uh, we are quite hopeful uh, even uh, about uh, the next year you would have seen you know in the uh, in the last year the electricity sector has been quite resilient uh, despite the economy shrinking by more than seven percent per annum the and demand the consumption for electricity uh, uh, went down only by about one percent and this year now we are seeing a growth in uh, the demand for electricity so that is something which uh, is a positive for the electricity sector you are already aware that uh, in the budget speech last year an announcement has been made by the finance minister for uh, a new uh, revamped uh, distribution scheme uh, of more than uh, 3 lakh 3.05 lakh uh, crore in which uh, almost a lakh of crore is uh, going to come as a grant so that is going to give a fillip to uh, the distribution sector and with the improvement in the distribution sector should have a cascading effect on all the other segments the transmission and the distribution uh, transmission and generation sectors and provide opportunities uh, for uh, uh, for finance companies like us uh, to uh, help in the uh, in the investment required for uh, uh, for for these schemes the third push is also as you are all aware coming from uh, from the energy transition with uh, with with ambitious target of government of india or 175 gigawatt next year fy22 and then you know moving forward 450 gigawatt of renewable energy uh, there is a tremendous opportunity for pfc rec uh, uh, companies uh, to uh, uh, to uh, to uh, take advantage of this uh, uh, benefit uh, uh, to take advantage of this push for renewable energy uh, already uh, we are sanctioning a major part of uh, uh, the investments required in the renewable energy sector uh, of course with the uh, covid last year uh, uh, the disbursements uh, in this particular sector had slowed down but uh, hopefully they should uh, we should again be on the growth trajectory then there are other uh, areas like e vehicles uh, energy efficiency is another area which the government uh, of india is going to give a push and then we are uh, entering into associated sectors uh, we are in touch with various agencies various state governments and their uh, organizations for projects related to lift irrigation uh, and others and especially the hydromechanical components and associated civil works in these projects and that is a new business segment which is opening up for uh, the likes of rec and we are hopeful that uh, the next year again this come in fact the the coming the, the current year we should be able to maintain and in fact exceed uh, the profit levels i would also like to mention that we have uh, from 1st of april 2021 we have uh, rationalized our interest rates with uh, the interest rates in the market as you have seen our cost of funds has gone down and the banks are also lending at uh, at at very uh, reasonable and low rates of interest so in order to be able to compete with the banks 
and also uh, in order to give to our borrowers reasonable rates of interest we have reduced our rates of interest uh, from 1st april 2021 and that also i am quite hopeful will uh, help us in um, improving our turnover improving our disbursements uh, uh, so our focus is going to be more on 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 uh, the quality of our uh, Request to please please to online. We've just lost the line for the current speaker. We'll just reconnect the speaker back. Oh, I got disconnected. Please connect. You must go yeah. ahead. You may go ahead, sir. Yeah. Hello. Sir, we can hear you on the call. Can you please okay, so I can continue. I, I really yes, do not please. know. Sorry, you know, I got uh, disconnected. I really do not, do not know what point I got disconnected. But uh, I think I was saying that uh, we reduced our rate of interest. And that yes, will again help us in uh, uh, getting more business without so much impacting uh, our margins because we have already a uh, decent amount of uh, margin decent cushion to actually reduce those rates so that will actually help us expand our business expand our turnover and revenue uh, without so much impinging on our margins uh, especially uh, hoping that uh, the liquidity that is present in the market and the uh, uh, accommodative stance of rbi and uh, maintenance of repo rate like we heard even today of the interest rates. So uh, going forward, I think uh, REC has uh, a very good uh, uh, future. Even in the coming year, we expect it to be a better year than, uh, than, the, than the last year. Uh, thank you. I think we can take uh, uh, would my, uh, I would request Director Fanan, uh, Mr. Uh, Ajoy Chaudhary, if he would like to add, if I have missed out on some of the key uh, points, I would request him to, you know, supplement me wherever he feels uh, necessary. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think uh, Sandy sir has covered uh, the almost entire gamut. Uh, our uh, only one thing that I'd like to say is that we have uh, he, he touched upon it provisioning coverage issue, which we have uh, improved quite significantly uh, this year. Uh, we have an ECL uh, uh, method of prov providing for on our assets uh, and the standard asset uh, we have uh, now brought uh, at par with the IREC norm of the RBI, which is 0.4 percent. So. And on stage three assets also, we have significantly improved our provisioning. And two of the assets which have uh, uh, come to standard asset uh, are SR power transmission and PRN energy, totaling to 2,520 crores. So that's uh, one of the highlights. And another thing it touched upon is the Atman Nirbhar scheme, where we discussed this year around 40,000 crores. Uh, so that uh, almost covers uh, uh, thank you. I think I think we can take questions now. Yeah. Yes, sure. sure. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue is assembled. The first question is from the line of 
Kishan Gupta from CD Research. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, afternoon. Yeah, so you talked about uh, your reducing rates compared to banks, etc. So what sort of competitive advantage do you have compared to banks in your lending business? Uh, the, see, the advantage that we have over our bank is not so much in, uh, you know, rates. We cannot, we cannot, you know, we cannot beat them in rates, as you would be aware, because, uh, because of the way uh the bank structure uh, uh, the, the banks you know raise their funds our competitive advantage basically lies in understanding the businesses uh especially the distribution companies uh very well so uh, it is over there and our licensing you know with the, the state uh, utilities especially because we are mostly you know in the state which is it is more than 90 percent of our portfolios in the state sector so our competitive advantage is basically in uh, understanding uh, these businesses uh, much better and being able to, of course, uh, uh, to able to uh, reduce our uh, uh, risk because uh, uh, we are able to get uh, because because we are in uh, because being uh, being the lending of being the lending arm of uh, government of India through various uh, and implementing various schemes, uh, we can get better security uh, from uh, the utilities as compared to banks. And then the second advantage is that because we are implementing agency, the nodal agency for various government schemes, then it becomes uh, advantageous for the utilities to take uh, funds from one agency because the grant is uh, channelized through REC and of course PSC also. So it is advantageous for them to take uh, the loan component because most of the schemes have a loan component. So that is the second major advantage that uh, REC has over the over the banks. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you mean to say invest in, in schemes where there are grants, and uh, if if uh, utilities approach banks, they will not be able to get that those grants. No, they will be able to get the, the get the grants. Most of the schemes do allow. It's not that the schemes do not allow it, but then uh, it's easier for them to handle. You know, to liaise with coordinate with one agency rather than two, one for grant and the other for the loan component. So uh, that is why uh, it is, uh, you know, advantageous for us vis-a-vis -vis the banks, but that is, that would be a small proportion. Uh, I don't think that's a very high proportion of the total uh, loan uh, book. The other advantage is, as I mentioned, that by virtue of being the implementing arm, we are able to understand the business of the, the utilities, the risk of the utilities, and accordingly uh, take uh, security for the advances that we make to them. <laughs> And uh, profits almost like leapt 80% last year, but you people have not jacked up the dividends this time. So any particular reason? Uh, last year, uh, you see, 18, 19, 20, we uh, gave uh, higher dividend than, you know, our profits. Uh, than what 30P guidelines say. So that is one. That is one major reason. So the so the dividend last year, that is 1920, last to last year, 1920 was uh, was on the higher side. Uh, this year it is uh, a shade low, uh, you know, I mean lower than what the DPE would have otherwise prescribed. But that is to uh, adjust for the higher uh, dividend last year 
and considering that you know our CRAR ratios at about 17 percent, our debt equity ratio touching you know almost eight were high, so that's why uh, we have uh, not uh, increased the dividend. And then the third thing is that there are certain investment opportunities that uh, may come come up, especially for the DFI, the uh, financial uh, institution uh, for the infrastructure, which has been announced uh, in the budget. There may be some investments over there. And then fourthly, of course, considering our overall uh, growth opportunities, we have maintained the invest. Uh, we have maintained the dividend levels. And what would the guidance market. now yes. going ahead for dividends? We 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 will as far as possible, unless there are any extraordinary reasons, as I mentioned to you, we will follow the DPE guidelines. Okay. Thanks, India. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Puneet Shivastava from. Daiva Capital, please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. Okay. So my, uh, my first question is on the uh, provisioning coverage. Uh, it has increased. So if you can throw some light, uh, is this because uh, you are seeing some more hit on any of the accounts or is it like because due to delay, uh, what would be the reason for raising the provisioning coverage this quarter so much? Mostly, and, yeah. okay, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. So, and second question, of course, uh, was on the yield side, you know, the uh, yield, of course, you mentioned that on a YOY basis, it's not fallen that much, but on a quarter to quarter basis, there's a sharp decline of around 55 basis point. So apart from that interest on interest charge, and of course, uh, uh, the uh, the liquidity is, uh, discount scheme, is there any other factor we should look at, which would have led to such a fall in, in, in the yield quarter to quarter? So, yeah, so, okay. So uh, first question about provisioning. Major uh, provisioning uh, increase is basically because of you know the Tamil Nadu utilities. Their rating has gone down, being an election year, etc. We hope you know that their rating will further will will improve you know in the coming years, and so uh, uh, this should be you know only a kind of a one-time uh, thing and. Uh, the provisioning, uh, they, it may it may even be reversed, you know, uh, in the coming years. To my mind, that is uh, the uh, that is the major reason. However, I will uh, request uh, my director, Finance Ajoyji, to okay, supplement me as to what are the other areas where provisioning has gone up, and also on your second uh, question related to yields. To my mind, these are the two reasons that you have already mentioned which is the interest on interest, which was reversed, and uh, secondly, the uh, the liquidity infusion scheme. But if there are any other uh, any other uh, points, then Ajayji, please uh, yeah. Thank uh, go you. ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have uh, increased our provisioning on our stage three assets. Uh, uh, last year, we had made a provisioning of around uh, 600 crores on stage three assets, which we have taken this time to close to 1800 crores, uh, largely because uh, we think that on the, on the ECL method that we are we are following, along with PFC, uh, we, uh, that mandates uh, you know as the time progresses, uh, the provision has to be increased. But we are very hopeful that uh, some of the provisions will get reversed. Uh, as we are seeing that the resolutions that are coming are at a higher uh, uh, levels. Uh, in uh, two or three cases, which we resolved uh, last year, uh, there was some reversal of provisioning. So uh, the provisioning uh, coverage ratio has been increased largely to uh, you know, take care of the ECL methodology. And of course, as uh, Mr. Ambassador has mentioned, that uh, standard asset provisioning we have taken up uh, up to the RBI mandated 0.4%. Regarding the yield on quarter to quarter basis, uh, the one is, as you said, interest on interest of 130 crores, which we uh, which we made provision for for payment of. And also because in the last quarter, you know, the number of days are less, and therefore the uh, income uh, in this quarter uh, because of the month of February is less. There's the two reasons only. The slight uh, 
uh, fall in the uh, yield. Thank you. Okay, sir. Got it. And sir, I'm sorry if I can chip in one more question. Uh, I just needed uh, your, uh, you know, some outlook on the uh, on the you know coal projects going ahead. Like so far, it has been you know uh, this burst been very strong. Uh, but you know there was an article today also you know from I I E F A saying that you know coal fired projects are under construction. You know they may get stranded because of the high cost and all that. So, so going ahead, how do you see them? Uh, do you see the risk increasing in the coal sector uh, projects and uh, and and also on the outlook in terms of the the sanctions and disbursements? Yeah, I mean that is. Uh... Uh, that is, of course, as you are saying. I mean, there there, there is a risk over there. Uh, uh, but there are countries, uh, you know, which are opposing even the IEA on uh, the phasing out of uh, coal. I'm not remembering which countries, but quite a few countries. I think, uh, you know, uh, for I think Japan is there. Japan is also included in in them. So coal will, of course, be phased out, but it's going to take time. It's it's not you know uh, it's imminent, but it's not it's not immediate. It it will take time. It will take time, and there are you know coal projects which are coming up and will be needed. See, India's consumption per capita is only about 1100, 1200. You know? <laughs> Sorry, I was on hold. So I was saying, Has that, uh, yeah, uh, I hope I am audible now. I was on yeah, hold. Yeah, fine now. So yes, 1,200 units per capita, you know, consumption in the country, in, in, in India, which is one third the global average and much less than the developed countries. So India is to grow and uh, renewable today does not, uh, will 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 not be able to you know meet those demands uh, so for for some time till we get you know round the clock uh, renewable energy power uh, at at uh, reasonable uh, comparable costs the costs of renewables today are comparable only you know peak uh, during uh, during the uh, during the daytime round the clock still coal uh, will be required. So while uh, the, I mean that risk is there, if there is a breakthrough, you know, there is in, in hydrogen or in battery storage or something, that risk is always going to be there. Other than that, I don't think India can afford to neglect coal at this stage, given the technology that we have today. Sure. Thanks. I hope that answers. Uh, your, your your question. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saket from India Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, sir. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, so my questions are regarding uh, slippages this particular quarter. So I noticed that our absolute gross NPAs have increased slightly uh, from December quarter, from around 25,000, uh, sorry, uh, uh, from around 18,221 crore to 18,257. I just heard uh, a Joyce are also mentioning that we've had a couple of resolutions, SR transmission being one. So were there any major slippages or these resolutions will only be reflected in numbers in the coming quarter? Just wanted to understand that. Yeah, so I'll request Ajayji only to answer. I think uh, it's a question of, you know, they're getting reflected in the accounts, but I'll request him to handle this. Sure. Yes, sir. In 2021, uh, uh, we had uh, two upgrades, uh, upgrades uh, as I said, SR power transmission, PR and energy, uh, okay. totally, totally to 2,500 crores, and one resolution of factor power, that of uh, 500 crores. There's only been one slippage during 2021, that is a, a small renewable project of 36 crores only. That's the only slippage. And going right. forward, uh, going forward, uh, you know, there are some of the uh, projects which are uh, uh, under very advanced stage of resolutions, and they are. Uh, uh, we hope that about uh, uh, how much? Uh, 
about uh, 3,000 crores of assets will be resolved next year. One of 54 crores VS Ignite has already been resolved and uh, this will be reflected next year. Great, great. Good to hear, sir. So, and, and in terms of the so resolutions, you mentioned that we are expecting about 3,000 odd crores. In terms of slippages, are we expecting any major project? I, small, I understand, can can come up, but any major projects which you are tracking, which which can uh, which can pose uh, a problem in the next year? We don't foresee any. Dope. Great, great. So, uh, just one more question from my side, if I can uh, slip in, which yeah, is sure. which is on. Which is on the provisioning side. So, sir, as, as you mentioned, that uh, we've taken the PCR on standard assets on NPAs already to 65%. So, uh, so you mentioned earlier that uh, as, as time progresses, we have to increase, increase the uh, coverage over there. But uh, now we are given that we are already at 65%, and in most cases, our resolution percentage has been much higher. Do you expect that we will do the same kind of provisioning in, uh, next year as well, or would the provisioning requirements come down? I just wanted to understand that as well. See, provisioning is a dynamic thing, and even our ECL methodology is a dynamic thing. Uh, right. We keep revising the methodology based on uh, the, you know, on on new experience as we gain uh, experience because we are also new uh, new to it. I think 65% right. is uh, my understanding is that 65% is uh, uh, perhaps you know on the uh, it's quite a reasonable figure, not, neither it's quite a realistic figure, and neither right. you know on the higher side nor on the lower side. Uh, right. I think it seems to be okay. Uh, Director Finance Ajay ji, you can also chip in. Uh, yes, sir. As you rightly said, uh, uh, we believe that this is a very reasonable figure, and uh, our auditors are also quite satisfied with this. <laughs> Going forward, uh, you know we. Uh, we will have to uh, see how the resolution uh, goes by, and uh, if there is a need for further provisioning, we'll do that. And if, the, if the reversal comes along, we'll do that uh, as well. But 65% is a very, very reasonable figure. On I mean, uh, the reverse side, you know, any surprises? And COVID is hopefully, uh, you know, I mean, one has learned, uh, and it has already been. To a great extent, you know, factored in. Uh, we we hope that uh, uh, it should be in the same same range. Okay, thank you. Glad to know that. Thanks for all the clarification. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shripal Doshi from Equilibrium Securities. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you for giving me the opportunity. So just wanted uh, some project was update. Uh, so as you said that you know SR power transmission and packer power have been resolved. Uh, what about uh, Heran Heran Energy? What about Ind Bharat Utkal and RKM Power Gen? Because I think these projects were also at advanced stages when we got uh, the resolution. But uh, I think they were also under the advanced stages. So what's the update there? So you have mentioned, I think uh, you mentioned RKM. So RKM restructuring plan has been implemented on 29-12-2020. So uh, and 60.7% is sustainable debt. The rest has been converted into debt instruments and account has been upgraded to standard category. Second, you have mentioned about Hiranmai. Here in May, we are in. Uh, we had restructured it. We had given some time till 31st March 2021 uh, for uh, the borrower to agree to certain conditions, which he has not been able to do so, uh, especially uh, you know related to tariffs. We believe there were elections in West Bengal, and uh, so we are still, you know, we we are hopeful that this year. We should be able to uh, resolve here in May. And there was another third one. Which one did you mention? Ind Bharat Utkal. Ind Bharat Utkal. Resolution plan has been approved by COC and NCLT approval is waited. Is awaited. So how much recovery are we expecting there, and what is the exposure? Uh, in Ind Bharat. Yeah. I will. Uh, Ind Bharat uh, total exposure is. 416 crore 
एंड आई रिक्वेस्ट माय कलीग्स टू गिव मी द डिटेल्स लक्ष्मण एंड कैन गो कमेंट पर्हेप्स yes sir uh, sir uh, in bharat utkal we are expecting uh, as per the plan that is revealed we are expecting uh, 31% recovery so that and, is uh, 31% and uh, here and my one update sir like uh, uh, the myt tariff order has come from uh, west bengal regulatory commission which was long awaited so that will also probably aid us in the resolution yeah so that will expedite the resolution. just just a follow up question here and my our exposure and how much are we expecting uh, the recovery there uh exposure yeah exposure is a uh, 1347 and uh, we are expecting a recovery on the restructured plan of around 68% 16 16 68 68 68 yes okay okay and sir uh, like we had indicated that you know some uh, like projects in the liquidation where bids have been received so there were three projects and they were i think close to 2000 aap jis vyakti se baat kar rahe hain unhone aapke call ko hold par rakha yeah so i think there were there were some three projects which were under liquidation and uh, uh, i think there were three projects and close to 2000 crore exposure uh so what's the update there have have it got further delayed or you know if you can just give some color there yeah lakshana please yes, go ahead sir. so yeah projects under liquidation uh, you know uh, four projects are there as you rightly said uh the liquidator is going through the process of uh, you know selling the assets uh like uh, in couple of uh, cases like uh, you know bids are under which and uh, in in bharat uh, madras there is a you know uh, litigation which is going on so that is actually delaying the process so otherwise uh, you know uh, lanco bhavan piecemeal sale is under this we are getting partial recoveries out of that that is uh, that project was very low on completion so konasima the bidding is uh, you know under way and uh, the total exposure as i said is right at 2000 crore for these four projects or is it uh, it's a uh, it's just less than uh, 2000 crores it's around 1800 crores okay 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 and and uh, uh, so, so uh, are there any other projects as I, as you said that you know there are two projects which are at our uh, advanced stages of uh, resolution So during FY20 or say during FY20 or first half of FY22, how how many projects do you see you know uh, will get resolved or we could have a healthy uh, you know provision right back from there? So, ah uh, okay, Lakshman, go ahead. Yeah, sir. Ah, uh, basically, ah uh, uh, the projects which are under uh, NCLT, ah uh, where bids have been received, there are five projects where we have received bids. uh accounting for uh, close to uh, you know 6000 crores of exposure where uh, you know the uh, decision on the bid is in advanced stages so we are quite hopeful that uh, at least uh, you know a uh, couple of them uh, should be resolved in the first half and the uh, balance could uh, take place in the next half so this is actually a, a major progress so we are hoping at least two or three of these uh, transactions will uh, fructify in the first half itself Is the overall blended, uh, you know, recovery that we are expecting, like for the six thousand crore? Ah, uh, so all these projects are actually like uh, you know uh, commissioned assets. So we are expecting a recovery which could be uh, you know varying from forty-five uh, uh, percent to sixty percent or uh, slightly above, depends on the project. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So Jabua project is one of them, you know, for example. the resolution is almost uh, around the corner similarly lanco amar contract is uh, around the corner uh, sr power again you know around the corner and we are getting you know good recovery here uh, and we should take care of you know we should there may be you know some uh, uh, reversal similarly southeast up transmission company that the bidding is uh, going on and we expect it should be uh, resolved uh, uh, this year uh, so quite a few projects i think this year uh, in terms of resolution 
uh, we should uh, uh, whether through IPC or outside and outside IPC we have you know dams for example dams should get uh, here and maybe we already talked about dams energy we should get uh, resolved uh, outside IPC restructuring plan is already in very advanced stage a tariff has been given by the regulator so that should also so quite a few projects we feel that this year should be good you know in so far as the resolution of uh, some of these uh, stressed assets is uh, is concerned right right thank you so much sir. so just one last question i think in our last call we had indicated that there are some uh, you know uh, four uh, projects wherein we have the ppa signed uh, but they were seeing some stress uh, uh, so they were Genco's basically private sector Genco's. So, so are, have we seen any slippage from there or, uh, during the year, or or are we seeing that it could slip in future? Which are the projects you are referring to, sir? Uh, I do not know the name, but then we had indicated that you know there are four uh, private sector Genco projects uh, wherein PPAs have been. They already have the PPA signed, and our exposure mm -hmm. was close to 60 billion. So we were seeing stress building up in those accounts. How how is the situation? At, I mean, currently, private. I is uh, uh, director of finance. Would you like to take this question? I mean, to my mind, there are. Uh, I mean, there are several small. projects. You know, like this mm. project in uh, which supplies you know power to UP. Uh, what's its name? There's a small project there. You know, there is some stuff. We have restructured it. TRN uh, energy. energy, you know, that is one. Uh, others would be, you know, of smaller uh, mm -hmm. capacity. I don't think there is any major. Uh, if there is any. Uh, I think, sir, so we have uh, some of the uh, projects like Sashan Power. Then MB Power, but these are all uh, doing very well. They have, uh, uh, they are uh, uh, servicing our loans uh, pretty well. I think Mr. V.K. Singh, would you like to add something? Uh, yes, sir. Whatever assets we have, particularly in thermal space, all of them have adequate uh, PPA tied up with the state, except as CMB sir mentioned, TN Energy, which has got roughly 70% long-term power tied up and rest of the power is being sold on exchange or through short-term arrangements. So, and, but then since TRN, we have already uh, uh, restructured very, very recently. We did 525 uh, restructuring in this case. But now this account is performing very well, upgraded also. And all other accounts are having adequate PPA. The other one is Tista that I can remember, you know, in Sikkim. Where, uh, but that also, you know, after take, 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 taking over by the Sikkim government company, uh, that is also uh, performing well. And uh, we, we don't, we don't expect even over there, you know, we don't expect any issues over there. So I do not know which four companies uh, we referred to last year. Maybe you know, very, very small assets, perhaps. Uh, and so that's why uh, there is no. There are no signs of stress, you know, uh, that we can see in large, in our large projects. Thank you. We can take the next question, I think. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anand Lada from HDFC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving me time. Uh, sir, just a couple of questions from my side, sir. Uh, so, just wanted to have your outlook on uh, growth, both in terms of disbursement and loan book growth for next year. Is there any any other new area which we are looking to lend uh, uh, as an extension to our positive exposure? Uh, if yes, if you can give some color on that. Uh, also, sir, there has been a media article on market-based economic dispatch. Uh, the article talks about the saving for the power sector per se or SEBs per se. So can you highlight what is uh, what is this new concept all about and what are the roles with, with RAC or PFC will play in this? Yeah, so outlook, 
But you see, this year was an exceptional year because of the Atma Bharat uh, liquidity infusion scheme, as I had mentioned in my earlier con call. Otherwise, you know, if you neglect that, we should expect you know normal times, 10% growth in uh, disbursement. So, considering 1920 as the base, one can easily expect you know a minimum of 10% growth over that. Uh, coming to uh, the areas, I already touched upon them. Energy transition opens up, you know, areas in renewables, so we are giving it a renewed focus, uh, renewables and associated transmission. And other uh, associated sectors we are opening up, you know, uh, we, we, are, uh, we are trying to get business in uh, irrigation, as I mentioned, and uh, electrical vehicle charging, it's a, that's again a sunrise uh, sector. We are uh, looking at that. We have done some financing uh, over there. Uh, so these are broadly the new sectors. And coming to your question about MBED, MBED, MBED is basically nothing but a, if you understand, a merit order. So instead of a, right now, you know, all the states are doing a state level merit order. Dispatch. So merit order basically means that you run the most efficient power plant, most efficient being calculated as the one which has the lowest energy charge, uh, the, the, the power plant which is able to generate one unit of energy at the lowest, lowest cost. So you run that first. Once you exhaust its capacity, then you run, you know, your next uh most optimal or cheapest uh power plant and so on and so forth so you run your most efficient power plants most uh, so as to reduce your energy charge because fixed charge is a given charge so that is being done on a state level basis right now the attempt is to on in mbed the attempt is to do a national level dispatch so that requires changes in regulations, and uh, that will mean that uh, the states may be procuring power from cheaper uh, power plants with whom they may not have a power per, uh, a power purchase agreement. So right now they are purchasing only from those with which they have a PPA, and they do it in the most cost efficient way because of which there may be some more efficient power plants with which that particular uh, state does not have uh, uh, a PPA, but this MBED will enable it through the power exchange. It will enable uh, that power plant to supply energy without a PPA to the DISCOM, and so that will be a win-win because the power plant, which is presently not operational, not running, it will run and uh, it will make some money because obviously it will be setting power at more than its energy charge, its cost. And it will be beneficial to the discount because it will be procuring at a cheaper cost than it would have otherwise done. So this is what is being attempted, I hope. So, what will be the role of REC in that, sir? I don't think PFC, REC directly uh, would have a role, but there are uh, benefits. As power sector, you know, improves its sustainability, viability. As per one study, uh, there were savings when they did this on a very limited, when they did this MBED on a limited scale. There were benefits of about you know 1500 crore when they did it only for NPPC power plants and those interstate uh, generating stations, IST, those inter, I think interstate generating stations, yeah, so those connected to the interstate transmission. There were savings of about 1447 crore. My memory serves me correct, about 1500 crore annually. So if this is done pan-India basis for all plants, there will be savings which will improve the financial health of the discounts. And so there will be spin-off uh, benefits in terms of uh, uh, low, low risk and uh, 
lower uh, uh, provisioning, uh, etc. So those will be the benefits. To PSA. If you allow me, I have more couple of questions. Uh, yeah. So one thing on on the dividend policy. Uh, so what I understand is uh, generally the public sector enterprise has a dividend policy of 40% of profit or 5% of net worth, whichever is higher. And if I go by that rules, uh, this year uh, our our payout has been at 26% of the profit. So just want to understand, sir, uh, what could be our dividend policy going forward? Yeah, so it is 30% of net profit. It is not 40%, 30%. Okay. We are marginally lower. And that is, as I explained uh, to an earlier question, that is uh, because, you know, uh, our uh, CRAR ratio, our debt equity ratios, you know, we needed to improve that, which will in turn help us in reducing our cost of borrowing. And uh, 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 secondly, it will also uh, help us in expanding as, as we need more money for, uh, uh, for for expanding our business, uh, for expanding our business. So it will help us in that. And an investment in the national, uh, uh, the financial institute for institution for infra infrastructure. Uh, over there, we may have to make some investment. This is over and above, you know, uh, fourth reason I gave was, that already in 1920 we gave much more than 30 percent so if you look at 1920 and 2021 together more or less we have met the dpe uh guideline so, so next year sir would that be fair to say we will move back to 30 percent payout policy yes 30 percent or five percent of net of net worth. okay and sir, 1920 uh, it was i think about 44 percent or so profits were very less but still you know we maintained that dividend in interest of our of the of the interest of the of the investors perfect perfect and sir lastly on the npa side uh, 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 you indicated uh, even color lot on the resolution side uh, two account i thought which if you thank you highlight one was ksk manadi and the other one was india bull nasik uh, it, it, both where they are in terms of the resolution uh, uh, stage. One thing that, second, sir, uh, government is, you could have heard from the media that government is forming a bad bank or, or PSU bank coming together and making a bad bank. Would RDC, PSC are looking to transfer some of their NPA to this bad bank? So, bad bank, uh, as I mentioned, you know, we are looking at participating in the bad bank. Uh, uh, I am not sure if if there will be any as of now. There does not seem to be a candidate uh, of uh, from you know our uh, lending uh, portfolio, which we may transfer to the bad bank. Bad bank as of now, there does not seem to be any probable candidate coming to KSK Mahanadi. You know, the bids are awaited. It's uh, you know. EYs have been received. Our final bids are uh, still awaited in KSK Mahanadi Power Company. And another, uh, which was the second one you mentioned? India Bull Nasik. India Bull Nasik is, you know, I mean, that is, that is, uh, we are in touch with the Maharashtra government. There is no, there is no further update. We are where we were. That is, uh, there is not much, uh, much, uh, you know, uh, much, much progress. Uh, I'll request uh, DT Sanjeev Ji Gupta if he has anything to add for this Mahanadi and uh, uh, so, sir, this, is, this is my status sir what you are seeing that is my status as of now so okay, thank you okay thank you so we can move to the that's, that's from my side sir thank you for getting thank you. thank you thank you the next question is from the line of Vipul Shah from Simangal Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. I just want to know what is the, the tenure of loan to this distribution companies in terms of number of years, generally? The tenure varies from, from one year to 15 years. One, one year, year to 15 years. One year to 15 years. The average, I think, is about seven years. 
Average is about seven. Remaining, years. remaining period, remaining as on today, is about between six and seven years. The remaining tenor of loans yeah. is between six and seven years. Ajay ji, so, uh, is that correct? Uh, am I coming? Sorry, that's yeah, yeah that's Sanjeev right. Sanjeev ji, आप बता दीजिए. Sanjeev ji, बता दें. और नॉर्मली सर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कंपनी में दिस हम लोग का नॉर्मल जो कैपेक्स लोन है कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर लोन फॉर क्रिएटिंग एसेट दैट इज प्रेजेंटली जनरली इज थ्री प्लस टेन इयर्स दैट इज थ्री इयर मोरटोरियम एंड टेन इयर्स इज दिस थिंग एंड एज यू सेट वेरी करेक्टली सर फॉर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कंपनी वेयर वी आर लैंडिंग ए लॉट ऑफ दिस शॉर्ट टर्म एंड मीडियम टर्म लोन सो दिस शॉर्ट टर्म इज One to three, one to three years, and in certain cases, uh, this sort of non-capex loan, this amount, this tenor comes to even seven years, even seven to ten years also. So on an average, if we will take uh, capex or non-capex loan together, the average tenor will be, as you have said, it will be seven to eight years also. And sir, any plan to move away from uh, the uh, lending to these distribution companies, which are I uh, mean, uh, no, no private player generally lends to them. So, even though we are having a book value of two twenty rupees, market is giving us very low valuation just because market is not confident that these loans will come back. So, what is your view, sir? I am very surprised that at why you know the market behaves like this. I mean, they have their own uh, way of looking at it. But you look at the history. You look at my NPAs. How many of them are from the state sector? Nil, zero. And uh, payments, all payments have been, you know, more or less on time. You know, within the 90-day period, which is given. You know, some of them, you know, breach that period, but within 90 days. So none of them are. you know all of them are standard all of them are kind of npa so uh, we have not had any default till now we have got good security for all our assets all our loans so uh, i find it surprising that you know rec as well as pfc are quoting at uh, uh less than uh, book value they are very very safe uh, they have been consistently you know giving uh, dividend they have been generating enough cash to be able to give the dividend and there has been at the same time reasonable growth uh, about 17% per annum is not reasonable it is high growth and we do expect you know at least 10 to 15% growth in the coming few years given uh, the various opportunities and given the fact that we are still you know amongst the low uh, energy consumption countries in the world no sir you said you have nil uh, uh, default from the state distribution company so where exactly what exactly is the source of npa then it's in private sector it all all in private sector yes Okay, sir. Okay, and lastly, sir, can you make some uh, means qualitative comment regarding uh, uh, your relationship with PFC? Means uh, all uh, means is it uh, is this company being run at arm's length or uh, all management personnel are sourced from PFC? If you can offer some comments, it will be. No, enough. they are totally. They are see. They are totally two different companies. the the management is separate the management is appoint, appointed by the government right it is not appointed by the pfc pfc has the right to only appoint one director so they are totally separate companies and uh, work you know independent of each other uh, and the personnel are totally different they are not you know personnel of psc on uh, deputation or on secondment to rec or or the other way around totally different uh, companies 
because they were different companies uh, uh, so the, the, that's why you know employees being being same uh, does not uh, of, of uh, being you know from one company in fact does not arise and that process of uh, i mean of uh, yeah, merging the employees also uh, is not on the cards so they are totally different uh, employee wise management wise uh, only ownership yes uh, pfc is uh, having majority ownership thank you thank you the next question is from the line of romil oza from oza please go ahead Hi sir, um, congrats on a great set of. Sir, sorry, sir, may I please request you to speak a bit louder? Yeah. Uh, hi sir, congrats on a great set of results. Um, Thank you. One, um, if there are no new NPAs, uh, this year will our profits grow compared to last year? Profits, you see, is a function of so many things. uh and and provisioning is only a, you know a small uh, uh amount uh in any case there are other uh, variables like you know foreign exchange which we can't take into account so to give a this year has been you know as you are aware this is uh this year we have had uh, the highest ever uh, profit yeah uh, so uh, and and you see our uh, return on net worth is about 22% it is the highest yeah. it is it is very very high yeah so i don't think you know that the return on net worth will remain the same it it and uh, a lot depends on you know how uh the interest rate move in the market uh but broadly speaking i think the profits should remain in the you know in the in the same range perhaps and so the second question uh and i would uh, request my director finance you know also to supplement if he has any thoughts mm-hmm. on this uh, yes sir yes sir this year uh, was a really an exceptional year and uh, also a year in which the rupee actually appreciated it's a long after a long time that we have seen appreciation of rupee but uh, the growth is there in the company and we have a large order book so i think uh, uh, going forward we should be able to uh, at least maintain uh, this kind of profit maybe Uh, somewhat here and there that's all but uh, looking at the growth book i am uh, confident that uh, we will maintain this sort of profits yeah. and so the second question um this relates to uh, why i think it's one of the reasons the company can't get the valuation it deserves so if you can please even if you have to pay less of a dividend please convey the idea that you are going to start paying the dividend quarterly i would prefer buybacks uh because i think uh, buying the share back below book value is a good thing but if you can't do buybacks at least please pay dividends quarterly because that will uh, what is happening is there's a technical when you pay the dividend in a lump sum manner the issue that's coming is after the dividend yeah, is yeah. paid for technical reasons the stock is compressed and it's taken almost 3 months to 4 months for the stock to go back to where it was in pfc's case it's still not risen back so so for please try to understand how the market perceives this please please i really humbly request you to even if you have to pay less of a dividend but pay it quarterly or the suggestion taken please because the stock will consider your suggestion 
the stock is extremely undervalued uh considering you have a 20% roe uh you have a wide board this is the great bolna secretary ko rehna hai mujhe the great stock so thank you okay we will we'll, we'll consider your suggestion thank you yaad dila do ek baar thank you Oh, those can be mentioned to some, you know, voice. Uh, yes, uh, give me a minute. Sure, it's done. We proceed to the next question is from the line of Melinda Usra from Diva Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. I just uh, have a couple of questions. One is, when that the reduction in car rates and the liquidity scheme? Green to go. Hello. Sorry, you were not audible. No, hello. Can can you hear me now, sir? Yeah, no. This is yeah. This is better. Yeah. Uh, sorry. So, sir, uh, regarding the uh, reduction in card rates and the liquidity scheme, how far do you think that uh, NIM will be compressed, or where do you think that uh, NIM would stabilize going forward? A, we would like our return on net worth. to be somewhere in the range of you know about 16% all right so it is right now you know last year last to last year it was about 14% this year it is more than 20% so on an average you know it is uh, about 17% so that is where you know uh, we would like it to be given that so so that is you know kind of a guidance to us and why do we say you know 16% is kind of the benchmark because in the power sector this is what this is the benchmark uh, at which the regulators are uh, are are uh, allowing you know for purposes of tariff so uh, if you go by that yardstick and uh, back calculate i think nim uh, uh, i think should be about i'm not sure you know you can do your calculations uh i am told you know about 3.2 or something but you can do your calculation we would like the return on net worth as i am saying you know to be in the region of 16 to 18% you know 14 15 to 18% also right yeah you can do your calculation and see where the and this is because we want to balance the interests of the consumers the mm-hmm. distribution companies generating companies and all this goes back you know to you people like you to the, as consumers uh, because the higher the rate of interest is passed on directly as uh, tariff so it, the benefit is not taken by um, is not uh, retained in case there is a reduction in the interest rate the benefit does not go to the distribution company or the generation company mm-hmm. most of okay. them you know are on cost plus basis tariffs are on cost plus basis and so most of these loans benefits of lower rate pass on to the consumer or in case the rates are increased the burden goes to the consumer so we would like to balance the interest of our shareholders Uh, as well as of the ultimate consumers of the country, and keep you know the return on net worth at a reasonable level. As you can see, you know this year slightly high, but it has we made up for our previous year lower uh, return on net worth. So somewhere in the region of you know 16 to 18 percent, where you know we would like our return on net worth to be, and uh, you can do your back calculations and see where. Uh, slightly it is on it is this year you can see it is on the higher side but uh, uh with the reduction in as you mentioned in the card rate and uh, uh, and the lower rate of interest in the rs uh liquidity infusion scheme this compressed a little uh, uh uh especially uh but we are hopeful it will uh, it will not get compressed too much if the liquidity and the rates of interest remain soft as as they are as they are as of now okay 
Thank you, sir. And how much of the CapEx loan has already been achieved, COD, and uh, what is under construction? Uh, Sanjeev ji, would you like to take this? Would you have any details to share, or we can join them uh, uh, you know, offline? Director Technical. Uh, I would like uh, this question to be repeated. Sir, uh, how much of the CAPEX loans have already achieved COD and how much of these loans are under construction? You see that uh, particularly, uh, if you see that this year we are looking for disbursement in the range of 80 to 85,000 uh, crores. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, out of which maybe 60 to 65,000 crores will be towards CAPEX project, which we have section, uh, sanctioned in last few years. So that pipeline is very, very strong. And uh, we will uh, uh, maintain the current level of disbursement uh, this year too, with almost a uh, close to 80, 80 to 85 percent contribution from uh, capital expenditure projects only. Will that uh, will that suffice as an answer to you? Oh, okay. And uh, sir, uh, how much of the portfolio has a reset of uh, three years, one year, and ten years? So, this can please provide that breakup. Yeah, that breakup. Mostly uh, it is one year. Uh, mostly it is three years. <clears throat> mostly three years. Yeah, mostly it is three years. Ajayji, would you have uh, figures? Yes, sir. It is almost thousand, uh, roughly three lakh seventy thousand. Out yes, of which you know twenty thousand is kind of stress, so three lakh fifty thousand. Yes, Mostly, I would uh, fifty percent is eighty uh, percent. You know, ballpark figure should be uh, three year reset. Is that a good uh, estimate? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, that's that's the that's the kind of figure, and uh, uh, some of them are uh, short term loans also, where there is no reset involved. So around eighty percent will be three year reset. And this uh, 10 to 15 percent will be the short term and medium term loan, and uh, 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 rest will be uh, some of them will be on one year reset and 10 year reset. So, largely on three year reset. The bulk of the portfolio is three year reset. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. The next question is from the line of. Saraf from India Capital, please go ahead. Hello. Hi, sir. Uh, this is Parang Trivedi from India Capital. Sir, just a small question on yields. So, the yield reduction that you mentioned, will it be applicable for uh, incremental loans or entire loan book of REC? So, it will be applicable on uh, the incremental loans. And uh, okay. for the existing loans, for the existing loans, as and when the loan becomes due for reset, interest reset, mostly, uh, which is, you know, three years, as we mentioned just now, again, they become eligible for uh, alignment with the new rate card. Okay. Uh, plus, plus, we are trying to come up with a scheme. Uh, of uh, uh, for the existing loans, uh, if they want to switch to a one-year reset, mostly I said it is three years. If they want to, uh, uh, to if they want to switch to a one-year reset, then we are giving you know some incentive to them of sharing the gains in reduction of uh, on 50-50 basis for the period. From the date of shift to one year, from that date to the date that the loan would uh, interest rate would have got reset after three years or ten years, as the case may be. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, due to time constraint, we take the last question from the line of Puneet Shavastava from Daiba Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you again for the opportunity. So I have a question on this, uh, uh, the government loan book. Uh, you know, you have like three categories of uh, loans in the government uh, loans. Uh, 
category A, B, and C, and I believe like Tangenco was downgraded from B to C last quarter. So, uh, can you uh, give the like portion of how much of the loans are in category A, B, and C respectively? So, <clears throat> this category that you are referring to is basically the category of the 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 rating. It's the credit rating. It is the credit rating of the utility, yes, yes. which yes. we are doing, you know, for the state power sector utilities. The ratings are varying from A plus plus, A plus, A, B, C. Yes. Right. So there are these, you know, five six categories. Most there are very few in A plus, A, A plus plus. Mostly, uh, they are the ones. And we can share the details with you. So, you know how much is an A plus plus. Often, I have not remember. Mostly, they will be in the range of B and C. Mostly in B. So, B and C, how much it, they will be put together, or mostly or C percentage? We'll, we'll, we can we can share the figures with you. I mean, often I will not be able to comment. Uh, okay. Mostly, they will be in B. Or A, A or B, B, right? Mostly they will be in these categories. So we can share the figures with you. There is some in A plus and uh, A plus plus. Maybe about fifteen percent would be you know A plus plus and A plus will be about you know maybe combined it will be about twenty fifteen to twenty percent. And then A and B will be you know the bulk of it, and C will be very small. Yeah, understood. And so just one last question on the reserve side. So if you see, you have started providing uh, some more details on the reserves, how they are moving as per industry, India is, and, you know, that's been very helpful. So I just needed to understand that, uh, you know, last year, which is FY20, you had a uh, net of 1,700 crores of negative reserves uh, coming from the forex translation losses. Now, which, of course, because the rupee has, uh, has uh, appreciated, that has come down to 500 crores. So, so, so reserves. So, do you account these reserves in the tier two calculations, especially the forex reserves, which which keeps coming, which is very generally very volatile during the quarter, and especially. Uh, Ajay, from... I'll ask you. I'll request you. Yes. To uh, yes, we do uh, take into account these uh, the impact of these reserves in our network. So. Yeah, while, I'm talking about the tier uh, one, sir. But whether do you consider them for tier one because there was a loss of 500 crores, which has come yeah. down from 1700 crores last year. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me explain to you. As per the ECL method, the loans that we have taken before 1 for 2018, those are spread over uh, the tenor of the loans. The foreign forex losses that that come on those loans are spread over the tenor of the loans, but. While calculating a net worth, the tier one capital, as you said, we we do take into account the uh, the positive or the adverse movements that take place in that account for loans which are before one for 2018. After one for 2018, any losses that are coming uh, are automatically taken care of in the profit and loss account. So it is automatically in the tier impacts the tier one capital. So tier one capital is definitely impacted by forex movements. Yeah, so 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 you are carrying like 500 crores of negative reserves somehow. In yeah, the, if you see the breakup of the reserves, you yeah. you show like minus 500 crores of right, transmission yeah. losses in the reserves. So that also you take into account the tier one. That's it. Absolutely, any loss forex losses is taken into account in tier one capital. Okay, and so there is a apart from because the RBBD you do this reserve for bad and doubtful debt that I think is tier two and not tier one. So, uh, so apart from RTC, <laughs> is there any other reserves which you take into account into tier two, like 45 IC and all? Are they into tier one or a tier two category? Uh, you see, provision for doubtful debt, as you are saying, is not considered for capital at all. They are reduced from the capital. They are straight away charged to the profit and loss account. So, uh, other than that, other than uh, those, uh, there are small uh, provisions that we make uh, for under section 45 1A of the RBI, 20% of PAT. And uh, for income tax uh, purposes, you know, those are taken uh, generally to be tier one capital. But as per the, you know, uh, the methodology given, uh, there are some of the provisions and reserves which are taken to tier two capital as well. Okay, thanks. 
thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today i would now like to hand the conference back to the management for closing comments <coughs> Yeah, yeah, Kunal over here. So I would like to thank the entire management uh, team of uh, REC for uh, patiently uh, answering all the questions and giving the detailed uh, explanation. And uh, all the best sir, for uh, future quarters and thanks for giving us the opportunity to host you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you to you for hosting. Thank On you. behalf of ICICS Securities Limited, we conclude today's conference. Thank you all for joining. You may now disconnect your lines.